So as we know, understanding the occupancy of a building is important, especially when it comes to adding delayed egress to a building. We know that we can add delayed egress to business buildings. You know, we have a lot of commercial buildings out there that are used for businesses. We have a lot of buildings which are being used for mercantile, um, especially when we get into um, the big mercantiles, whether it's you're selling groceries, you're selling food, you know, clothing, whatever else you're trying to sell. Um, hardware, you know, you think about Home Depot's or Lowe's or Kohl's or Target. Um, a lot of different applications and we were, oftentimes when we're thinking about mercantile, we're thinking about prevention of theft. Um, where are we commonly going to find delayed egress? And oftentimes it's going to be at those back perimeter doors where, you know, there's oftentimes, you know, there's nobody in the area. It's a storage or a stock area where someone might try and steal something. They might try and pick it up. They go to that door and they want to exit as quickly as they can, but they run into a delayed egress door, which is going to sound a siren. But we're also going to talk about as we get in here more institutional because institutional is one of the fastest growing areas in which we're going to add delayed egress. Now we know that when we're going to add delayed egress, the hardware is just as important. The hardware is going to be based oftentimes on doing the site survey, what's existing on the existing door for hardware, what type of hardware do we have to have based on um, the path of egress, uh, based on occupancy, load, how many people are going to be going out of the door, we may have to have a panic rated bar to be able to get out of the door, but maybe we add a little bit of delayed egress to it so that we've got the delayed capability to prevent someone from just running out. So understanding occupancy, how it's going to be used, can we add delayed egress to it? We're going to talk about that when we get into the code section. But hardware is where we're going to focus at right now. And keep in mind, hardware is not actually about physical hardware, but it's also including signage that has to come with it. When you're buying delayed egress hardware, signage usually comes as a component with inside the same box, which tells us, how do I get out of a door? You know, And we're going to see a couple of images that are going to be, you know, have a lot of verbiage on it. Um, and oftentimes when we go beyond the verbiage which is permitted in code, we have to have an approval from the authority having jurisdiction on is this verbiage approved on that signage. So it's not only about the hardware, it's also about signage that comes with it. Now we primarily have two different ways that we're looking at adding hardware to a door. One is a component style of the system. When you're doing a component style of system, I might have a, a bar put across the door, some type of device put across the door, which I can build a switch into it. Um, inside that bar, I may also have my delayed egress system all intact within the bar, but I may take that bar and just run it off and it's gonna connect up to a magnet up at the top of the door. And on the side of the door, I may have a little controller, a little controller that's got a little command center built inside of it that might give me a, a PZ or a screamer, but also a reset button. More common than that is, is becoming more the, the standard is a single component device, which gives us delayed egress into one single component with the most common being um, a, some type of a rim exit bar um, or a delayed egress mag lock up at the top of the door. And the reason <clears throat> I say that's becoming the most common is because we are running across some jurisdictions within within states, um, primarily we're looking at cities, and it really kind of started with Denver. Is Denver kind of said, um, I, if you're gonna put multiple components on an opening, where I might have a magnet on top of the door, um, some type of a bar across the door to release it, a little command center on the side with a PZO on the side of it, on the side of the door, multiple components. The authority having jurisdiction oftentimes may not know or understand how to test um, those multiple components. so. For you to be able to put that on the opening, they're now requiring all those four components to be tested and approved and listed um, to be able to fit in that type of application, which is really complicated and very expensive for manufacturers to get that type of listing. So more often we're seeing the push going to a single device, oftentimes a delayed egress mag lock or some type of an exit device across the door. So we wanna pay attention to the details that are coming from our authorities having jurisdiction. Are there any written amendments or policies that say what we can or cannot do to add hardware for delayed egress? The other big one that, that's always been important to me is because I come from not only access control and security industry, but I also came from the fire industry as well, is when we're doing a delayed egress system is the requirement to connect it to a fire alarm system. 
And when we get into the codes, I'm going to break that down into a little bit more detail of that fire alarm system and the connection requirements because the codes have changed and evolved over the last few years. So if we're going to add delayed egress to an opening, if there's a fire alarm system in the building, it does require a connection to the fire alarm system. That connection will either be done by the customer's vendor for their fire alarm system. Um, it may possibly be done by you if you carry a license to do fire alarm contracting and it's approved by the, the customer to be able to do that. But for the most part, it's going to be done by the customer provided vendor, but a connection between the delayed egress system with a, belt, with a relay that will break power to the delayed egress system upon any activation of the fire alarm system. Here you can see an example of delayed egress in conjunction with access control. We're seeing a growth in that area, especially where we want to have common, uh, common traffic through an area, but we also want to be able to cr uh, create that slow down environment in case we have to for potential theft. Um, oftentimes when we're doing delayed egress in conjunction with access control, you're dealing with additional switching, which has to occur. Um, you may also be dealing with um, a situation in which you have um, multiple demographics in a certain area. I was um, on a site survey um, in California one time and I came across a door that had three different languages that explained how do I get through this delayed egress door. And the, the purpose was is I had a high, uh, a high population for Chinese, a high population for Spanish, and a high population for English. So the demographics drove the code to say I want three different languages on the opening. Um, unfortunately, they would not allow me to take a picture of that opening, but I did have a picture of two different languages on an opening. Um, and sometimes you have to keep in mind is we may not also have to have any type of signage on an opening as well. And we'll talk about that as we get into the code section.